Hey everybody, I'm back um, with this long overdue I know you're probably wondering, like, why am I filming in my closet? Well, I thought it would be, um, I thought it would be much quieter than it is. And <laughs> then an airplane just flew by and you could probably hear it, like, a lot. I don't even live near an airport. So I don't understand, <laughs> like, I really don't understand why that's happening. But anyway... This video is a little bit different because we're not talking about makeup. Surprise, surprise. Why else would I be in my closet? Um, def definitely not going to do makeup <laughs> in my closet. But um, it was the only quiet place I could find. And I wanted to share kind of what's been going on with this pregnancy. Some people ask, some people don't. But just that way it's out there and I could share with everybody at once um kind of what's been going on um so I want to forewarn anybody who's watching that there is going to be some heavy stuff in here um I don't know like how emotional I'll get I don't know how emotional the video will be I'm sorry in advance if anything is too heavy or too emotional or too triggering that's why I'm warning you forewarning you um, at the beginning don't watch if um, um, topics of pregnancy complications um, cerclage placement miscarriages um, some pretty heavy stuff so I have my tissue box ready um, just because I'm gonna delve into kind of all that so um yeah feel free to turn it off uh or not watch um but there is going to be some exciting news like I am still pregnant um that's very exciting and I have in this envelope the sex of the baby which I know a ton of people are have been dying to know what I'm having and that's in here and I will open it um, on camera for you guys to finally um, figure out what it is so without further ado let me just kind of like jump into it um, as some of you may or may not know uh, every pregnancy I've had um, has been an early delivery. So my first pregnancy, I went at 36 weeks. My second pregnancy, I went at 35 weeks. And my third pregnancy, I went at 29 weeks. And then last year, um, around July, I had a miscarriage, um, which, you know, there were so many things going on with that pregnancy it's hard to tell whether or not what we know now had anything to do with that. But during the time I was pregnant last year in 2019, I um, had something called a subchorionic hemorrhage along with the pregnancy. So basically what that means is there was like a, a, a blood clot in my uterus near the baby. Um, and I read a lot of different things. Um, my doctor did an ultrasound um, a few days, like maybe two days before I actually had a miscarriage. And I asked my doctor um, if, if uh, they could see the SCH. And my doctor was like, um, you mean HCG? No, that's something we can only see with a blood test. Uh, and I was like, no, I mean, SCH, subchorionic hemorrhage, the thing that's in there with my baby <laughs> that we've discussed already. Um, so it just kind of, you know, all of it, all, everything basically last year just seemed like, um, all the, I don't know that saying, 
odds were against me. All the odds were against me and my baby last pregnancy, baby Bowie. So, um, I, you know, I took, it took me a while to process that I was off of social media for a while, like I usually am when something is going on. Um, so that brings me fast forward to this pregnancy. Um, I, for this, you know, for this pregnancy, I wanted to do, I wanted to go all out. I wanted to have, I'm like out of breath already. Oh my God. Whew. I'm like out of breath because it's hard for me to sit up during this pregnancy with everything going on. I actually like to be laying on my side or, uh, just kind of like, you know, leaning back to take a lot of pressure off of my cervix. So that's kind of what's been going on. Um, issues with my cervix this pregnancy. So like I was saying, this pregnancy, I wanted to be different. I wanted to take pictures of my belly every step of the way, you know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 27 weeks. You know, I just wanted to, um, I wanted to, um, document the whole thing. I was so excited about it. I wanted to do a gender reveal. Um, that's why I got it like secret. <laughs> I got like a secret little envelope and for a while I didn't know what the baby was. Um, I guess we could do it now. I can open the little envelope right now. Um, so I can stop referring to baby as baby and tell you what, um, baby is. So I opened it up. And it's a girl. <laughs> Yay! Another baby girl. Um, so we were super excited. Like I said, I was going to keep it a secret for a long time. Um, but things have just been so unconventional. Um, at this point, I don't really... You know, at this point, I I don't want to do, um, you know, the big gender reveal party anymore. I don't want to have a baby shower. And, well, okay, let me rewind. I do want those things. I wanted those things. But it all just seemed so, um, I don't really know how to put it. Because I don't want to sound like I'm against it. Because I'm absolutely not. I wanted all those things. It just seems so like it it just seemed like it didn't really matter once I started um once I started to go through all the things that I started to go through with this baby girl you know you plan for things to go a certain way and then they just start to like whew, and there's really not much to do you know there's really not much we could do about it so um it started um I, we, well, we basically knew we were going to take some different steps this time around. I started seeing a different doctor, a high-risk pregnancy doctor, and a uh, maternal fetal medicine uh, doctor right away, which is something that you do. It's something that you do uh, for your 20-week usually. That's when you go see maternal fetal because they like to go over, you know, that uh, the 20-week anatomy scan with you. That's usually when you'll see a maternal fetal medicine doctor. But I um, started seeing the doctor earlier than expected because I had um, some bleeding and cramping at the beginning of 16 weeks. Um, so not only was I super scared because last year, like I said, I had a miscarriage in 2019 and there was a lot of bleeding involved in that miscarriage, not just because of the miscarriage itself, but because I said, like I said, I had that subchorionic hemorrhage. So, um, I was really scared this time around. So 16 weeks, I didn't, um, I did find out the sex of the baby back then, but I could not, um, 
I didn't want to look at it because I, I thought, you know, we still might be okay or we might not be okay. Um, because, yeah, I, I was really scared. So, um, uh, I basically, and anyway, I went to the doctor <laughs> and we started talking about things we were going to do to, um, elongate this pregnancy. So, um, we decided, um, cause we had different options and, um, what we ultimately decided was to go with, um, every two weeks me going in to check to see if my cervix was still intact because we, um, after the bleeding, I went to go see maternal fetal medicine. They, um, we decided together that we would check my cervix every two weeks to see if something was happening, if it was opening faster than it should, or, um, if it just wasn't, uh, holding as best as it should. So I don't really know, like all of the technical terminology here for that, but that's just basically what, um, what's happening. Um, I don't know if I should like, I mean, I could do a visual to show you guys like what's going on, but I feel like that might be too much. So let's not, let's not go there. But, um, <clears throat> we did the, um, scan 16 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks. Um, and, uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, I have my anatomy scans. <laughs> I'm going to try to wrap this up because I didn't want it to be too long. Um, but <laughs> like literally I have a book here, 16 weeks. Um, my cervix was four centimeters. Then, uh, at 18 weeks, it went down to three centimeters. Then at 20 weeks, it went down to two and a half centimeters. And, um, that was kind of the point when we decided, or sorry, it was at 2.4. So I guess, um, what's considered a, like a normal and still long cervix is a two and a half, 2.5. And because I was 2.4 and because I had gone from four to three to two, um, we decided that the best option at that point would be to, um, go in and put a cerclage in place. So I don't know if any of you have ever used like those ACE wrap bandages, like to wrap like a broken arm or something, or like a sprained arm, you know, you use the ACE wrap. And then there's those little clips where you clip one side to the other side. Um, those little clips that come with the ACE wrap bandage, that's basically what they put on my cervix to keep it closed. Um, because from the time we decided to put the cerclage in at my 20 week appointment, I went the next day to go get it put in. And the doctor said, uh, the doctor who was putting it in said that I was already a centimeter dilated too. So normally, um, if labor was progressing, that isn't something that we would do, but they said, um, that it's, it was sort of like right at the cusp. So we, um, decided to go with it and, um, that's what we did. So now I am, um, not a lot of bleeding, but I was having, um, I, I, I won't get too graphic. I don't want to gross anyone out, but I was having some issues with it. And so I went back to the doctor to see like what, what could possibly be going on. And, uh, 
they decided it was just a part of the natural healing process, what was going on. So, um, everything looked fine. Everything, you know, the cerclage was still holding it closed. Everything was fine. I was having contractions, um, but they were, they, they you know, they went away right after some rest. So the doctors, the doctors still haven't put me on an official bed rest. Um, but I think they just don't want to say it because they are actually um, insistent that bed rest actually puts people into preterm labor a lot sooner. So I think that's why they're hesitant with putting me on official bed rest, but they do want me to take it like very, very easy. So um, no walking up and down stairs unless I'm going to stay up or downstairs, up or downstairs um, for a long time. Um, no activity, like I can't even go for a walk anymore because having too much pressure on my, like I've been sitting here for 25 minutes already and I feel so much pressure. So I'm going to wrap up my video, um, basically to say, um, you know, Things didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. I am extremely, extremely grateful that baby girl. <laughs> I'm extremely grateful that baby girl is safe and okay. I am dealing with not being able, I feel like I'm not able to be excited um, about this pregnancy still because, uh, when I did go to the hospital last week, um, because I was having contractions, they put me on observation. And like I said, with rest, the contractions went away. Um, but the doctors did say at this point, there's really nothing that we can do. We want you to make it to 24 weeks. If you make it to 24 weeks, we'll be able to um, deliver baby if baby wants to come then. Obviously we want baby, we want baby girl to get further <laughs> than, um, my last baby girl. Um, <clears throat> but, um, I think we're all just looking at it from like a very realistic point. Um, because I know that there's that possibility that we won't make it. I feel like I don't get to be happy about it. I want, I, I am very happy on one hand, but there's still that other hand that, um, is very realistic to me. Um, especially going through the trauma of having a miscarriage last year, I feel like it's a very real, um, possibility. I'm happy. I'm very happy that I'm okay, that baby girl is safe, but because there's that reality lingering still that if I don't make it to 24 weeks, then I won't have a baby girl, um, that sort of keeps me, that m makes me contain my excitement. Um, so, um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm really trying where I'm hopeful. I am very hopeful that I will make it to 24 weeks. Um, but I'm taking it very slow, taking it easy, taking it day by day. Um, unfortunately with all this going on, I haven't been taking pictures. I haven't been documenting as much as I want to. I haven't been buying any more baby stuff. Um, I bought like the car seat and everything right away. Like right when we passed the, uh, 12 weeks, I was like so excited and I bought all the things. I got my breast pump. I got so many things. Um, but I just felt like I should wait and wait. And then when we hit 16 weeks, I bought a little more, but things started getting harder. Um, and now here we are. 
22 weeks, two more weeks to go, and I'll feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Um, I'm sorry if you feel like I'm oversharing. I'm sorry if this doesn't resonate with anybody. I'm sorry. Um, if it's a little sad, I, I don't mean for it to be. Um, I just, like I said, figured it would be easier to kind of just make a video, you know, get everybody at once, let everybody know what's going on. Um, baby girl, baby girl is cooking. She's still cooking. Um, mama just has to do everything in her imaginal power. I have to do everything in my imaginable power to make sure maybe baby girl gets it, gets here. So I do hope to keep sharing, but just right now I am just gonna keep as much um, to myself and taking care of myself and taking care of baby girl. So I hope that um, this sort of sheds a little light on what's been going on, and, um, I hope any, anyone and everyone can understand why I've been a little, um, pulled back again, and thank you for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for giving me your time, maybe I will see you guys in my next video soon, um, until then, bye.